Look, look. If you don't, don't want to make, that, make change that change within, within yourself, yourself, it's not going to get, gonna better. get better. This might this not might apply not... to everybody, but if you feel like you're rock bottom, okay, and you're hoping for a better day, but you literally are doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. You are provided with a choice every day. You are provided with multiple choices throughout the entire day. Take that choice, make that change. You've identified a problem. You're saying you're rock bottom. Got it, you're there now. There's only one way and it's up. So change your mindset, use that choice and go a freaking different direction. Love y'all, Faceman VTT out. Day three of retirement. As an infantryman, I was asked if I could clean the sink. So let's look at this. Definitely some kind of grime on there. And I open up the cabinet. What do I use? Nothing comes to mind. Like my experience is my skill set. Nothing. Wait a minute. Everyone knows this is how you clean everything. Infantry retired. Just a good second. Uh, uh, would you like a military discount? Uh, oh, do you offer one? Uh, oh, it's the cap of the day. <laughs> CC's Pizza is the county fair of restaurants. You go in there, you look around, you feel a little bit better about yourself, then you realize that you're in there too. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, let's be honest. You know, not everybody's made for this life. It's scary. You know, you gotta jump out of a plane while it's moving. That's not natural. It's high, it's, it's fucking wet outside sometimes. It's snowy, it's hot, it's dry, it's shitty. Who the fuck would want to be airborne? Best job, fucking best job I ever had. This is the Veteran Trash Talk Hour, hosted by Nick, Dave, and Buddy. Real warriors making fun of other real warriors. Try to not get triggered. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 132 of the Trash Talk Hour. Special guest today is Clifford Bauman, also known as VTT's Mental Health Warrior. He's going to be an awesome book that just came out. And as usual, I'm here with Buddy and Nick. Happy Saturday and cheers. How's everybody doing? What's going on? What's going what on? Up? Yeah, this is great, man. I, mean, I was looking forward to this one because uh, I, I was able to read the book a long time ago. So it was uh, when it was first out. So uh, uh, it's uh, right. be a lot of fun to talk about. Uh, That's exciting, yeah. I've been texting with Cliff. I'm like, yeah, I haven't checked the mail. So I got the book today. Probably was in the mail about two days ago. But <laughs> I will be reading it oh, well. after the show starting the day. And I'll have it finished. Uh, well, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Nick, Nick, Nick read the book earlier than he's actually in the book with what he said about the book. So That's what's up. No big deal. He made it in the book. I'm excited to get into it, man. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Let us know where you're dropping in from. You know, give us a like, do all that good stuff. And uh, we're going to kick started with a conspiracy. Buddy, I'm trying to stay away from aliens, okay? Thank I'm you. Trying. Thank you. Turns out, turns I out. I guess you could say that's into... out of this world. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Well, it turns out after looking into this conspiracy a little bit more, there are some alien ties possibly, but it could be some other shit too, okay? I'm sorry. All right. So I was. Uh, you know, I was in TikTok the other day looking at some stuff, and I came across uh, Mount Graham. Are you guys tracking that Graham, Mount Graham in uh, Arizona? So years ago, there was this whole dispute with this mountain, okay? Um, and it was with the Native Americans because the Vatican wanted to come out and build a telescope on this mountain in Arizona, which the telescope is there. And the name of the telescope is Lucifer, okay? This is like, you guys can Google this right now. This is factual all right so like the question is why are they building this telescope and then i have this little video this guy's going to talk about it briefly but apparently this mountain is a stargate okay where you can go into other dimensions where aliens come out of multiple ufo science all kinds of crazy shit happens on this mountain um 
Chris is going to play the video and then we can discuss it a little bit further. So, Chris, go ahead and play that video. And in NASA, after an act by the United States Congress ordered it to be no done. Audio. But the question remained in our mind why had the no tribal nothing, yes. communities yeah. fought so diligently we'll the video is against the construction? He's the old guy yeah. talking. He's obviously, <laughs> he's obviously you know, speaking it's Italian from the Vatican. So. <laughs> he looks like an old guy that just farted and knows that it's going to. The get Vatican farted. was actually watching and they shut it down. Yeah, they just shut this down. <laughs> They're like, mm -mm, not happening. Not today. There we go. Good job, Chris. ordered it to be done. It. But the question remained in our mind, why had the tribal communities fought so diligently against the construction of telescopes atop that mountain? Now, I had wrongly assumed that this was because Mount Graham was a sacred place, as in preceding generations of Native Americans had lived and died on it, and therefore it was considered holy ground, something like a graveyard. Um, but I learned later that while that was partially true, it really wasn't the big issue. The real dispute surrounded how Mount Graham is considered one of the four holiest mountains in the world for the Apache and is considered sacred to all of the region's native peoples. And it is so because it is what we might call a stargate. Um, in their mythos, a portal through which the star people have come since the dawn of time. And once we understood that fact, our suspicions as to why the Vatican and NASA had chosen that mountain that in particular. What are you doing, Chris? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Oh, it's that, the old guy that smelled poop again. Fact. Yeah. Including the largest <laughs> binocular telescope in the world where the Lucifer device is kept. Uh, why would they have gone to all of that trouble? Why not just go to another mountain range and find basically the same height, the same environmental conditions? Why did it have to be in NASA after an act by the United States Congress ordered it? All right, Chris is just having issues with this video, so oh, we're just yeah. not going to worry about it. It's the Last power. Story, yeah, Last story it's, short, it's, he just talks about it a little bit more. And the actual video is about 10 minutes. He talks about, like, giants, like, all kinds of stuff. Basically, this holy place... That shit still happens. They're just. Wait, you were going to have us watch that for 10 minutes? No, I, I shortened it for you guys. Without oh, even saying anything. It was a, a minute and 30 seconds. He was just going to fuck us into right, 10 you know? minutes of, of, of the <laughs> old guy. That I wasn't going to do that to you, poop. buddy. But, like, I can go downstairs and watch minute TV, video. Dave. I didn't <laughs> sign on here to watch TV. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, watch so long story short, there was that whole lawsuit. Everything was going on. They didn't want it. Then, uh, you know, they, they approved it. Vatican came out here, put the telescope on there. They named it Lucifer. I think now they've actually changed the name to a different name because it was catching too much heat. Like, why would the Vatican name a telescope Lucifer? Like, what the fuck? Um, so my whole take on this is definitely um, like Holy Land. Like, it's important to them. Um, I do find it a little weird that they would just pick that certain mountain. But then again, Arizona, you know, we're in the desert. So if you had a telescope, I guess when you look at the sky in Arizona out in the desert, like you, you see the sky, you see all the stars, you know, cause it's not as, you know, there's not too much oh. city around it. And, you know, so like maybe it's just a good location, but I don't know. It is weird. And then Arizona, buddy's going to get mad that I'm going to say this is a hotbed for fucking UFOs and shit. And apparently there's a lot of shit that goes on over there. So I don't know. I'd say there's something fishy with the mountain. I can't really say what it is, whether it's aliens, UFOs, definitely sacred, maybe. Maybe there's some religious stuff that goes on, you know, maybe some spirits. I don't know. Definitely something going on there. I don't know. The Vatican having their ties in it, like weird Lucifer. I don't know. Maybe some one of you guys can give me an explanation. What, what, definitely what something fishy, but I can't, I can't wrap my finger around it. Graham, what was the Mount mountain Graham in Arizona. It's, it's north yeah, of mountain Tucson. Graham. It's about four, four and a half hours from here. Yeah. It's by, yeah. it's, uh, there's a little yeah. town called Cracker right by, it's like by, it's in between Graham and Cracker. <laughs> yeah, good one, buddy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's actually there, the telescope is there. Like I said, I think they changed the name. I, I don't know what's going on there, man. I just, I can't really say one thing or the other. Definitely weird. And and like the, the Lucifer thing is super weird. I, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Cliff, what's your take? Well, you know, you know, over history, and, and if you watch, they have unearthed, you know, giants, you know, bones of giants and stuff, and they try to hide it. And they talk about more giants more. in there, too, yeah. I, I think that with, you know, technology and information and all the things that people tried to hide over the years, they're not going to be able to hide anymore. And I think a lot of our history and a lot of our world history, we're going to find out that a lot of it um, 
is some of the things that we thought wasn't true is going to be, you know, found out to be true. And I think it's just going to keep getting weirder and weirder as time goes on. I agree with that. That is definitely spot on. There's a lot with the Vatican and especially with the Catholic church. Like there's, that's a whole nother conspiracy I can talk about some other day, but um, yeah, I find it weird that they would come out here and like fight so hard, you know, to get this telescope yeah. there. And uh, supposedly it's like one of the largest, like, I knew that I knew that they had a space program, but I didn't know that they were that involved in the space program. Um, because when you dig a little bit deeper, you're like, holy shit, like why is the Vatican so involved with plant planets and stars? And yeah, it's just weird. And then to name it Lucifer, like is that just one of like in your face? Like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good take. Buddy, wh what's going on here, man? Give us a logical explanation. Okay. So I, I hate <laughs> I hate to I hate to fucking say this, <laughs> but yeah, I do think that there is something there's something to the whole star people um, people showing up at different mm -hmm. points in our history to kind of mm -hmm. guide us in a direction that they mm -hmm. would like a civilization to be guided in. I mean, to me, it probably it, it probably has a lot to do with like social like ex experimentation, depending on what civilization there's just too many civilizations that have the same appearances from the same people in their art and their you know like you know, s sculptures and hieroglyphs and things like that of, of people that came from other planets or star people and if you yep. if you really read into like you know the even the bible or myth you know mythological fucking stories show like that hard word to say if you get it, it is happening. I did it. Happening. Impressive. If, if you've been drinking a little bit. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not making. I'm not making fun of you. That it's being said, yeah. if uh, if you understand that people that have a like me a small vocabulary will explain things in the vocabulary that they have or the experiences that they what they've experienced is how they make sense of the things that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. That yeah, like I can I can get behind that and I can get behind like there are certain places the Bermuda Triangle. There are certain places where phenomena happen that don't generally happen in Clarksville, Tennessee, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and there are... You know, yeah, the fourth like most the Native, holiest mountain for the Native Americans in the world. Yeah, like, yeah. You know? the Native Americans were... I mean, they weren't stupid. They explained things the way they thought that mm -hmm. they were happening, just like we do. Um, yeah. and, and 150, 200 years from now, people will probably think the way we explain things was archaic and retarded. Of course. I mean, stupid. Sorry, we can't say... We can't say the R word here. Any, we can't say the R word. Um, anywho. Uh, yeah. well, well, okay. Slow. That's a really good take, buddy. I love that. But what Vatican named the telescope Lucifer? Oh, that's easy. Well, I mean, the Vatican is, I mean, the, the greatest trick that Deborah ever, the, the devil ever pulled. Another hard word. Deborah, the Deborah ever pulled. it right in front of your face, right? Richard, Richard, God, Deborah. And from the village of Norway, boys, what is a trick like the dipper. Anyway, so the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to hide in plain sight. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Plain sight, right in front of your face, uh, yeah. 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 It's the Illuminati talk, right doesn't there. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your religion <laughs> is. You can make you can you can make a very good argument that the most one of the most evil war making machines in the history of the Earth has been organized religion. Oh, 100 percent. So spot on. And it doesn't matter what religion you're talking about, except for like maybe Buddhist or Hindus. They're, yeah. They're pretty peaceful folks i think yeah, buddhism like is like not, in my opinion like buddhism is my, one of my favorite religions but like I think we talked if about we're talking about like, like christianity and islam like we we got a lot of blood on them hands well the so catholics we, yeah the catholics do too you know oh yeah. <laughs> well, the they're christians so let's yeah come on. but that's a, but, <laughs> overarching. They're, they're, but anyway yeah, that's yeah. what i would do, we, i would i would say that i uh, i don't i don't trust anything that uh i don't trust anything that there is any religion that has giant, huge cathedrals surrounded by homeless people. That's not yeah. kind of like every southern. Town. That ain't what Jesus. Yeah, the Vatican is like its own. It's like its own country in Italy. It's not you know? like yeah. It is its own. Yeah. Country. and it's it's one of the most protected places in the world, security wise. You yeah, because nothing says uh, nothing says I'm like Jesus, like uh, 
mini guns and and there's th there's and a whole million other million conspiracy like gold. one of their hall one of their halls yeah. like looks like a fucking serpent like they say that there's a lot of devil worship that like it's it's crazy we can talk about that one on a different episode but that's a yeah. rabbit hole man that's a crazy yeah, I'm just one not a, i'm not a big fan of the vatican uh but then again, i was I'm raised catholic of, I, but... i'm also not a big fan of joel yeah. olstein so i'm, I'm pretty i'm a big fan of <laughs> yeah. yeah he's a baller yeah yeah, yeah. who are you a fan of buddy yeah yeah I, I heard I'm little boys a big, been a fan of the I'm Vatican. I'm not even either. a big fan of the, the church that's right beside my house. That it takes up three square blocks of the city that I live in. That's not huge, but there's like homeless people all over the place. That I'm, yeah. I give a sandwich to. Yeah. To a like, while they're sitting on a gold fucking. Throne, you got a million right? dollar church and you keep making new buildings, but like this dude can't get a pair of pants that his balls isn't showing in. Come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. Bad. Yeah. We could yeah. do a whole, we could do a whole segment on that religion and money and all that. But good take, buddy. I like that. I like that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I had to throw the alien shit in there, but just apparently that happened. Wait, 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 wait. Stargate, you know what? Sometimes you know? it's appropriate. It wasn't about aliens, though, yeah. Dave. So don't yeah. let Buddy get all yeah. on your case yeah. on this one. I'm no, not. Back I'm just, not. just for all you viewers yeah. that are watching, I'm not allowed to talk about aliens anymore. Hey, buddy I mean, not later. six weeks in a row. All right. Like, <laughs> it's, it's the hottest thing out right now. Did you guys get the link? <laughs> There's this new link. Even, Doc uh, Mill. I want to talk about that real quick. Government. Uh, they created this site, uh, this website, and it's Doc oh, Mill, and you can. They released a bunch so. of videos. It just came out a couple was, days ago. I was gonna have your back, but now I can't anymore. Well, you guys gotta, I gotta check it out. I looked at I, I looked at that website when you sent it. The government did not create that website. There's no fucking way the government. You know how I know the government didn't create that. Look at how long Obamacare's website got it, to go on. There, there, there aren't there are three <laughs> million there aren't three <laughs> million different hyperlinks to take you to like eight different fucking things. Yeah, like yeah, you, can videos, find every, no. you can find you can click on everything you want no. to find. Like oh, I want to no. see videos of aliens. Thank you, Brian. Damn right, that's a great alien right there. Yeah, yeah. the um, government the government didn't come up with that fucking website. We don't. They released the videos though. That are easy. They released the videos, though. I, I like. I like what Sean said. Videos. Sean said, "Wasn't Jesus technically alien? Absolutely. That yeah. came from outer yeah. space, bro. Like be. the star people. Pow! Right, right into a belly. Like yeah. it's like that if you believe in the tale. So yeah. anyway, Nick, what's your take on all of this? Yeah, you Lucifer, know, uh, star people, Stargate. The, the, I actually the Lucifer one I think is easily explainable, kind of going to what you guys were talking about. Um, but yeah, you know there are the latitude and longitudinal lines, and you know the. I know that some people think that Earth is flat, but it's not. And so the way that the Earth is tilted, <laughs> and the and the way that you know, like the orbit, and then this we see stars. There are places on Earth that have spectacles that happen, like Buddy was saying, like Absolutely. you know, just by just by mm -hmm. the way we are. So when you have, like I always like the uh, the theory because we don't have a lot of primary sources from how the native americans settled where they settled um mm -hmm. but there's theories and one of the theories is as they came down the bering strait and then down the west coast right you had some of the crazy stay up in the north because it's cold and they hunt and freaking you know stay in igloos and shit like that like whatever uh, stay you know and then they kept going down and then when they got to the arizona california area those were the strongest tribes like those were the ones that had their shit together the nomads went out east and the religious fanatics went down south Right. That's why you had the Mayans like cut people's heads off for, because it was an eclipse, you know, instead of just waiting for the eclipse to be over. Like, I don't know, like, they're, like they're, they were weirdos. And that that's why uh, the Spanish under the Catholic Church, you know, when they came over there, right, to save the Indians when it was all for just gold. Right. Like uh, they go over there and right. they were able to they gain by a, taking the gold away. Well, they were able to gain a foothold real fast because they were able to tell these religious fanatics that our God's better we'll watch this canon and prove it. Boom. You know, like, and then, and then it does. But when they got to like Arizona, like the letters back from the priests to the church were, Hey, these, these guys already have like three story houses. They already have government set up. They already have like, you know, there's no way we're converting these people. In fact, they're going to kill us. Right. Like, like these are patches, you know, like, they're going to kill us. Um, so, there is something there that they probably had that stronghold there where they were able to, you know, there was probably a, a that mountain is spectacular in some way. We have to go there one time to find out what it is. Now, here's I, need, why I need to go there and do it. I need to film Sean, it and do Sean, a couple videos. Sean from the chat actually makes a decent point. How high is that mountain? Is it over 10,000 feet? Yeah, I don't know. How high you know, is there, there is There is oxygen deprivation. 
Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can go up there and see all kinds of wild shit if sure. you stay up there long enough. Um, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like, or like, or like the Bay Although, too, do you yeah. hear many stories of like stuff like this from like Mount Everest? Well, no, these people just die yeah. up there. That's like, like yeah, that's oh, you climbed Mount Everest and then you from, died. They go from, oh, there's the aliens, so, and then they're sliding down like a... So, but here's, <laughs> why it's called, yeah. here, here's why it's called Lucifer. Sled. Hey, there goes Bob. He's sledding by. Well, they do break it down, <laughs> Lucifer, and actually it's an... Every every letter is an acronym for this telescope, but it's just kind yeah. of like Lucifer. right. But I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stay with Lucifer because I didn't research it. So it's the name of the devil, right? I'm gonna stay with that. Now, oh, it's not a devil. It's it's not the name of the devil. It's a fallen devil. It's the devil. Fallen yeah. angel. It's the yeah. fallen angel. Lucifer yeah. is actually a fallen yeah. angel. He's one of God's yeah. right hand men. So right hand angels before he was. He was. He was. Yeah. They're not boys anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> so with that, and again, religion. Is has always been about control and power, and like and like Bunny yeah. says, you know, you look down south, you have, you know, you have a poor town with a giant Baptist church there, like massive, and then everything mm-hmm. else is run down, right? It's always been about control and power. Now here's the issue: is especially in in America, is our literacy rate has, you know, for how diverse we are, has actually, you know, in the last sixty years been phenomenally increased, right? So the power over the Southwest and then Mexico, the Catholic church still has, they get a lot of money because there's a lot of Catholics down there from when the Spanish came here. Right. So they have to control that religion down there. And what's the biggest threat to religion, not Christianity or not faith, not spirituality. The biggest threat to religion is science. Right. That's the biggest threat to them. It is. It is because I'd say aliens. Gonna, I'd say that's aliens not true. Are. It, it I is. Say it's gonna. Really I'm not true. talking about. I'm, I don't talk about spirituality. I'm talking about religion, where they're controlling the narrative. Controlling That's why the I narrative. think aliens is the I biggest threat. That. But I think I, aliens I would, is the biggest the only, threat. The only argument I would have with that is that most people that go into the sciences are like start, especially like the the more famous ones, start off as atheist or agnostic, and then become um, spiritual. Well, I agree. I'm not talking about religion so much. Because there's so much in the the in the universe that is Designed. so unexplainable, and the coincidence would have to be the the statistic or st- the anomaly of it being able to be a thing is is so crazy that they're like there has to be something we just don't right. know. No, no, yeah, so Gregory they, they, agrees they, with me. I think aliens are real quick, Nick. Because right. no, no, they come out talking about. Are you aliens? talking about to religion or to spirituality? Yes, to religion. No, 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 no. no I, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. Not, yeah. not to religion. Religion is a completely different thing. Their, their right. thing is to believe exactly what, like the Amish, like, hey, 1830s, that's when that's when time stopped. No more yeah. stuff. Because. Just because. Yeah, yeah or yeah. Ride, the, ride the tail end of this comet. That's, yeah. that's a- how aliens, it aliens wouldn't be a threat to spirituality whatsoever, but they're a giant yeah. threat to religion. I right? think they yeah. are. Like, this goes... Look, not quick, to, this goes no, you're to, you're yeah. confusing spirituality and religion. Well, you can be spiritual. They're yeah. not a okay. threat at all yeah, to yeah. spirituality. I can be spiritual as shit, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. Right? Religion, like, though, for sure. Religion, religion though, for yeah, sure. exactly. Because religion's yeah. about power, it's about control. Correct. So you put that telescope up there and say that you have the best telescope on the fourth holiest mountain, and we don't see shit. Right? There ain't nothing up there. Well, it's also when you come in, Lucifer when you come in and say course. that there's aliens are fucking real mm-hmm. now you know all the religion like it makes you question everything that's like what project blue book or project blue beam where they want to bring that in and create one world religion to take total control because like if you control. have christian you know if you have the you know catholic saying that's only one god this is it now you come in with fucking little gray dudes coming from outer space from planet whatever it changes the whole dynamic of everything. Like, who did they come from? You know. Well, like, so does reading. Created... Re- yeah. yeah. So does reading. The so reason think... why the reason why the Muslims still in, in Islamic Muslim countries, right, that they still have control over the people is because they can't fucking read, right? So uh, education, education. I know it's yeah, not yeah. just that. I know it's yeah, not I mean, just the, that. The, the other, the, the the other major reason right. is because I mean that's why Bin Laden had a shit ton of followers. It's education too. It hundred percent plays it's a huge role. It's also the yeah. lack of. Yeah. It's the lack of conflicting ideology the only thing that beats an ideology is a better ideology but if you can keep your people like in saudi arabia it's illegal to go in with any a bible a it's illegal to go in with like a cross you can't go in with a cross you can't talk about christianity which 
I mean, whatever. It's an Islamic country. Like, they have their laws. That's whatever. I mean, it is what it is. But it is a pretty stark reminder that if if you believe so fervently in your religion, if it can't stand up to somebody talking about a different religion, then yeah. how... And that's my biggest problem. Because I'm agnostic. That's my biggest problem with religion. I always say, like, and I'm, I, I'm spiritual, 100%, you know, but my biggest problem with religion, it's all... It's all cultural based and where you were born and raised. That's it. Yeah, well, like, like if like all of us were raised with, uh... in Iraq and there is a small pocket for those of you who watch, oh, we have Christians over there. Yeah, we do. But the majority is, you know, Islam and all that stuff. Like it's all cultural based. I was raised in Germany. So like Catholicism, like Catholics, you know, yep. like America. And Christians, Luther's. Like, Martin Luther was German. Exactly. Hinduism, India. It's yeah. for me, it's Not cultural based. And that's what you're around surrounded by. Yeah. Maybe you venture onto a different religion, but. And that's why I hate about, I despise it when one religion tells the other religion, oh, you, your religion is false. It's only my religion. Well, fuck you. You know, like I was raised in that country. That's where I learned about this. How are you telling me that you're the only right, right but where we, That's where my we problem. Do, with, where where we know. do say F you to other religions and where we should have the right to do it, which is what America is great at, is because we can read in America, right? And we can, you know, other countries. Educa it goes back to education. Right, it goes yeah. back to education. I can look at you right in the face and why America will never fight a holy war. So they say, hey, Jesus says we need to go slaughter all those people. I'm going to be like, where, where the yeah. hell did he ever say that? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. like, like never. In fact, he told me to be nicer to that person than kill him. <laughs> like, PJ, PJ, <laughs> PJ in the chat says charisma and ability to influence a group is a well, variable that's the, of every well, religion. Well, that's the problem. At, you know, George, George, Sor at George Soros, Soros is yeah. one of, George Soros is one of Cliff's favorite guys. Right, so even George Soros says it's like you control religion, or you control the money, or you control the education, you control the yeah. people. If you get two of those three, you control the whole damn country. Well, right, done. and it's like, what's, like what's that, that's thing, it. What's the first thing communists do when they take over a country? Get rid of, get rid of the religion and the guns. Get rid of the guns. Well, guns. Get rid of the guns. Yeah, the guns. Get rid well, of the maybe religion. guns first in religion, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we could well, do a whole segment on on religion because, because then, because then the but, state becomes your god. The state it, well, that, that's but this is the point. I, that's the, about we're talking. We'll go back to the conspiracy. I was talking about like you know, like the reason why they called it this was because I think the the Catholic Church because they have the, a lot of their money comes from that region of the country, right? And then the South. Mm -hmm. And so, is Cliff going to talk about his book? Fuck you, Brian. Maybe Gregory Lee, later. All religion. Who was right? <laughs> Correct, Gregory. That's my argument with it. Yeah. But, so yeah, yeah like. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, and hey, Brian, you know if you watch you watch the show all the time, we usually go to about thirty to about thirty minutes <laughs> before the guest talks. All right, yeah, so right. It is what it is. So, buddy, buddy, quick Odyssey cap. Oh no, no, we need to just go to Cliff. Okay, well let's, let, let's yeah, <laughs> no, no, we, we got we got five minutes for your honesty cap. Come Brian's yeah, getting yeah. pissed off. And yeah, Brian's get getting it. mad. He's got yeah, something to do today. Like, well, yeah, hey. you know you can rewatch it on YouTube. So for everybody that's yeah. watching right now on Veteran Trash right. Talk, we have about twelve viewers. Can you guys go over to YouTube and just hit subscribe? I so really wish that you would 12. stop saying how many viewers we have on YouTube. It always makes me feel bad. Every yeah. time. No, I didn't say that. I, I mean, said Veteran are, Trash are, Talk. And, 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 oh, and again, you're we, saying we subscribers? Yeah, <laughs> we are shadow banned. Shadow banned. Yeah, we have uh, twelve. Sure. We have twelve viewers yeah. on YouTube. Like it's like yeah. that's. Most no, of have, those are people. No, no, we, I don't ridiculous. think we have any viewers on YouTube. We have we have seventeen hundred followers on on, uh, on YouTube, and nobody yeah. like they don't even get notified when it yeah, comes yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, uh, is that? Yeah. All yeah, right. right. Go ahead, subscribe. Thank you, Colby. Are we doing this honesty cap thing? Or are we? Are yeah, we do it. Do it. Do it. So, uh, so every on. year, Smash every that like year, we have. I go on this Labor Day trip with a bunch of guys from the eighty second. Um. Charlie, or not Charlie Company, they're from Bravo Company, the best company. A little company. veto, a little no, veto action. Uh, they, they are not as good as Charlie yeah. Company. And, you know. I, I mean, I would... Not even close, the, buddy. The The reason that we have a B for Bravo is because we're the best. Ooh, I like Everybody it. knows I like that. It. Traditionally, yeah, yeah. that's what they say. Aren't, anyway, you, so says, aren't you so savvy, buddy? Religion yeah, says yeah. it. Yeah, Charlie stands for Puck <laughs> Company. Like, you guys just... Pain and tithe. Watch Pain and tithe. Watch everybody else do their business, basically. Anywho, um, but uh, anyway, went on this trip. I'm not going to like name any names. It was, it was a good trip. But at one point, we did have uh, one of the guys uh, got a little angry and uh, kind of snapped, right? Hmm. So we have to have this discussion with everybody on the group. Like, you know, there are some people that are like, hey, man, we, maybe we don't invite this guy back. Or, you know, maybe uh, – yeah, like, 
you know, that was unacceptable what he did because he, he may or may not have grabbed a hold of somebody and uh, maybe choked him a little bit. Whatever, just a little bit, just a little choke. Was um, it warranted? No, not really. Like, yeah, no, it so it was assault. So it was assault. It definitely went from zero to sixty super fast. Oh that damn! Being said the honesty cap is you know as veterans we we like we talk about all the good things right. But there are bad things that happen. There are people like you know, talk about the PTSD. You talk about like the the symptoms that, that come up because of it. But it's a whole lot different when it actually happens. And then your reaction to someone else that has that problem. Mm-hmm. If you isolate them by kicking them out of your group, if you isolate them by acting like the thing that they just did is such an egregious violation of like, your personal space or whatever you're not helping them like in in seer school you learn to insulate people not isolate people when when something is happening they make a mistake you bring them into your group and y- you insulate them from the outside so that they can get better so they can reboot and then reattack it and try to do better the next time. If you're not doing that with your group of veteran friends, when they like, Oh, he did something wrong. And I'm not saying that there's not like a limit, like you, yeah. you do something like super illegal. You're going to have to go to jail. I, 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 I kind of how that works. Kind of how that works. Yeah. That being yeah. said, if, if, if you just act out, you, say you're going to do something that you shouldn't, that, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Like me being uncomfortable doesn't matter as much as me bringing you in and isolating you or, or insulating you from, from what the problem is. Like reach out to your friends when they're ha- It's easy to be friends with somebody when everything's going great, it's hard to be friends with somebody yeah. when things aren't going as well, but that's when they need you to be their friend. That's when they need you to be there yeah. to be their, their advocate, their, the person that helps out with them. So my, my honesty cap is to, uh, don't just push people away when they do something that you don't like. Back to the religion thing. Don't talk about Jesus. Be like Jesus act like yeah. he would do like he he talked to prostitutes he talked he talked to people that most people felt uncomfortable talking with a lot of people feel yeah. uncomfortable talking to us talk to your yeah. boys if they do something wrong fucking keep talking to them keep helping them that's mm-hmm. when they yeah you. anyway that was that's my honesty cap Aww, no, that, was good one. that was a good one that was a good one yeah uh, yeah, yeah that was a good one uh, I, 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 actually, I actually agree you know Very um you know, being, you know, hey, September, buddy. September, hey, buddy. Suits, Fuck by the you. Way, <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now we was going to get a Did Jimmy just hit us up with a fucking buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Cliff. Dave, Dave just ruined it. We're so close. Face man just ruined it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I cussed well, before already, right? Hey, Gre- Gregory yeah. Lee switched over to YouTube for us. So he's like, what I'm watching, what do I miss? Unfortunately, Gregory, we see your comments, but we don't comment back because nobody Oh, watches. and we just got another subscriber. Yeah. Thank you, Gregory. Yeah. Thanks, Gregory. Yeah. Thank you, awesome. Oh, but, yeah. shit. Colby Walton's on YouTube. We're, we're blowing it up on YouTube. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, We've got two more. Two more. Now got, All right. now we got right. more on YouTube. Yeah. Smash that like yeah. button, Jen. Smash it. Yeah, but. Hey, uh, yeah, this is talking about his book. Or are we gonna? Yeah, I am. That is my yeah. job. I was waiting for you to be done. All right. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, unlike you guys today, I, I've been very calm and collective and not interrupted you guys. But it's okay. So now, um, now Nick's gonna talk yeah. for ten minutes before. He yeah, get to you never know. Again, that's why I started a podcast. But um, yeah. you know, it, it's <laughs> wait. We do a podcast. It, it, yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even know we had a podcast for five months. Um, it, this is. <laughs> This is phenomenal uh, to have Cliff on here. A lot of you know who he is. Uh, he does the Mental Health Minute every morning. Uh, and I enjoy that because I get to, you know, download it and then upload it so I get to watch it. And, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we're, we're dealing with something very similar in our lives, maybe like a different, you know, state, different type of problem. But 
similar to Titan probably where to where it affects you the same way. And, you know, there's you just, you just pay attention to that and you don't have to do what he says. You don't have to like listen to it, but you know, it's something that will, it, it might be for you that day. And if it's not for you that day, the tools throwing. in your kit bag. Yep. Yeah. Tools we'll in listen your kit to one bag. of the other ones because one of the other ones might be. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, as we started this journey with veteran trash talk and we've, you know, established a tent you know let's get biblical you know like one of my favorite bible verses is bring people into your tent that expand it right and not not people that close it not people that make it smaller that's what narcissists do like bring everybody in they all have the same group thinking bring people in your tent that expand it right cliff's one of those guys right so when we met cliff when we met him it's like hey we need to get cliff in our tent all right because he's going to expand it all right he's going to do great things he's you know it's, it's just going to be awesome for veteran trash talk. So we got to know, learn a lot about Cliff. Uh, he's opened his house to me and my family. Uh, just a phenomenal human being. And he wrote this book, you know, talking about his own story. And I won't get into it because he will. Um, but it's a phenomenal book about resilience uh, and why, you know, you're like Buddy was saying, you know, you, you talk to people. All right. You, yeah. you go find out how people are doing. And you got to be genuine. You got to be authentic. Otherwise, you're a cliche asshole, right? Like, go like, yeah. go find out like what's going on. And it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to bring those darkest moments out. So, um, yeah, right. But <laughs> pitch a tent joke. Uh, same thing. <laughs> hey, I always bring those people in too. But hey, Cliff, welcome to the show. Talk about this awesome book that you wrote that I've already had the pleasure of reading. Okay. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah, uh, so, first of all, it's it's great to always come on your guys' show. You know, I have my my show and podcast, the uh, the you know, the Mental Health Warrior, um, that shows on Thursday. Then it's on Reese Across America Radio on Fridays and Sundays, and, and super um, thankful for that. Um, but you know, you know, as I started my journey and in, in publicly speaking about my suicide attempt, both on active duty and after I retired, you know, I get asked a lot of questions. You know, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to do a book? And, you know, my good friend of mine, Bill uh, Kramer, who wrote the book with me, um, was a forensic psychologist, did a lot of research into the book, about a year and a half of research that he did uh, into the book. Uh, so it covers not only my story about what I did on 9-11, but also the two other gentlemen that I was with, um, Jack uh, Dutill, and then the other person I was with. And, you know, we were there from, you know, the time that it happened. Um, we had to take a little bit of breaks. So I got command directed back to the, the command center. Um, and then we went back on the 12th and stayed, you know, until after they carried all the bodies out very early on the 13th, you know. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the lo stories are written about 9-11, uh, especially at the Pentagon. And so that's kind of why I wanted to, um, you know, get my story out there about what went on at the Pentagon. Because, you know, it's been 22 years now. And, you know, a lot of kids learn that in history. And, and so, you know, the live accounts and people that saw it, just like any time in history, uh, it's always good to get those stories down. And it was very important for me. I'm, I'm very happy with Amplify who published the book. Um, so what I did during the show, if you go to my website and click on the QR code that's on the screen right now, um, I reduced the book down to an even $20. You will have to pay shipping. But if you order it through my website, I'll uh, autograph it for you and get it in the mail. Um, the book normally sells for $29.99. So I took about $10 off the book um, for anybody watching the show today that wants to get the book uh, at a discount. Um, so I appreciate all the sales and everybody um, that bought the book. But, you know, 9-11, you know, forever changed a lot of people's lives, whether you're in the military or not, and, and truly affected a lot, um, you know, and me. And, you know, it. we talked about PTSD and when people, you know, like Buddy was talking, you know, maybe his friends and you guys were all talking around and telling stories. And that one story triggered that, that gentleman that got angry. And, you know, he having PTSD may not have realized that his anger, how he outburst, you know, to him, maybe it didn't seem so extreme. Um, but to you guys listening to it, it probably seemed a little extreme. And so, you know, I understand that I, I, I lived that my life was hell for a year uh, until the point I got, you know, to where I wanted to, uh, to not live anymore. And that's a that's a screwed up place to get to. Um, when you no longer want to walk this earth or see the warmth of the sun on your face or, or deal with anything, um, that's a messed up place to be. And, you know, that's why I do the mental health warrior. That's why, you know, and, and work with, with Bill, I wrote the book, um, you know, because it's important for people to know that that's not the avenue you want to go down. Um, you know, I talk about that endlessly on my, 
my podcast is, you know, there's always another path to take. It may not be an easy one, but you don't want to go down the same path that I went down that almost cost me my life. And, and had my brother not found me, I wouldn't be sitting here. I mean, he literally saved my life. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I have the book. I think it's, it's an, it's just, it's an important story, but it doesn't only just cover the Pentagon. It co also covers other stories and things that's happened in my life, um, that I thought also was important and relevant in, in being resilience and being to the fact that I'm still here and probably, probably shouldn't be. Um, but you know, it's, it's, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, me getting introduced to veterans trash talk and you guys and the relationship that we've built in the last almost three years now, uh, has been a pretty amazing journey. And I've, and I loved every single minute of it. And I can't thank you guys enough because, um, you know, when I left the military, I wasn't in a good place, you know, and you guys kind of helped me through that. And I just, I just appreciate that. Um, but you know, I, we talked about this before on the show and last year, I think we touched on it on the nine 11 special. You know, they got that conspiracy theory out there about, oh, it wasn't a plane to hit the Pentagon. It was a missile. Uh, you know, you guys seen all those videos and they got snapshots of it and everything. And and I, and I broke this, you know, theory last year. I brought it up. We talked about it. I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, I crawled over a hell of a lot of plane parts uh, for that not to be a plane. And a lot of it was very big plane parts. So uh, unless you were like, uh, like me, boots on the ground, crawling over plane parts, crawling over pieces of people, uh, I don't think you get a, a voice in it um, because, uh, you know, somebody sitting behind a computer making up shit that wasn't there, just like in anything else that, that we do in life as veterans, um, you just don't understand. And it just irritates me when I see those and people, you know, buy into the bullshit. Um, you know, I crawled over a hell of a lot of plane parts. Yeah. Um, for those of you watching for context, uh, you got to check the book out. Go get it. He'll explain what happened on 9-11. Now that you guys are on YouTube, there's some YouTube comments coming in. Uh, search on YouTube, Veteran Trash Talk, the 9-11 special on our channel last year that we did with yeah. Cliff and Jack. Uh, that was probably that was probably one of the, I would say, probably one of the most emotional podcasts we've ever done. Right. To where yeah. it just the whole time there was just a it, it just felt heavy. Like yeah. and like you said, for those people who weren't there and want to have their conspiracies. And again, that's the beauty of freedom is yet you get to have the freedom sure. to be a moron. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but we're going to hear like we're here to tell you that, no, like people lost their lives. that day. And, you know, people went through hell like Cliff did to save as many as they could. Right. So when you want to get all loose cannon and talk like that, just remember it, it's going to gonna hurt somebody. But Cliff, talk about uh, talk about the experience of writing the book, because we've had authors on the show. Talk about yeah. the experience of it. And like 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 what where did where did you like it? Where did you not like it? Anybody who may be thinking about writing a book like what what sure. did it help you? And did it hurt you sometimes? Yeah, well, and, and I will tell you that Bill and I did a lot of research on finding a publisher because that's that's the important part, right? Bill did an awesome job writing the book, and and he had the manuscript spot on before we even gave it to a publisher. But you don't have to get that far into it. Um, actually, if you watch my podcast that was on uh, yesterday, and it's going to replay on Sunday at 10 p.m. on Reason Across America Radio, um, I actually had um, the vice president of productions for Amplify on my show, and we just talked about this subject. Um, and so when you're thinking about writing a book and you have an idea, first you have to decide, are you going to write it yourself or are you going to find a ghostwriter? Now, most publishing companies have a ghostwriting department inside them or they have contractors that do ghostwriting. Um, I'm not a good writer. That's why I had Bill do it. And Bill would sit down with a recorder and I would tell him stories and then he would write them up and then we would meet again and go over what he written and then changing things need to be changed. Um, so you don't have to be a writer to write a book. Uh, you can actually do recordings and they can have ghostwriters that come in and, and look at it. Um, but there's three different ways you can publish a book. Uh, you can do self-publishing um, and you can go through all that rigmarole. Now, I will amplify as a hybrid publisher. And what does hybrid publisher mean? When you go with a hybrid publisher, you pay all the cost to publish the book. Um, you sign a contract with them. You decide how many books you want inside the contract. You decide the kind of cover you want. Do you want pictures inside the book? Uh, all those things are laid out in the contract. But the important part of that is, is I control all, I have control of everything. It's all copyrighted to me and I control everything. 
we did have offers from big publishing companies to publish the book, but we didn't go with them for the reason is, is you lose that. They could go in and completely change your story and you mm -hmm. have no say so over it. You know, and, and you can't make those changes. Uh, and so they'll come up with their own cover for the book. They'll come up with everything and you just have to say, OK, and go with it. Um, and then you don't make a whole lot of money per book when you go with the big publishers, because obviously they're going to take their cut uh, and get it back. So yeah, you know, what, would be, the, what would be the benefit to even use them? Then I guess it's cheaper then. Right. Because you said the way you did it, you had to put it in all your own money. But going with a big yeah, publisher, like people what would be do the it benefit? for name recognitions. A lot of people do it gotcha. so they can say, "Oh, well, I had a book published by ah, you know, Boost and Spencer okay. or whatever." They really don't care if they sell it or not. They just want to have that name recognition uh, for gotcha. it. Um, you know, to me, um, because this was the first book that I've ever done, it was personal to me. So, you know, if you look at the cover, you know, I wanted the cover, and you can feel it. It's kind of raised. You know, that's a, that's an expense. The cover has three different types of colors on it. That's an expense. Uh, you know, one my big design thing is I came up with is I changed the O in Warrior to the Pentagon because I wanted to give people a visual reference on, um, you know, on what the story was about that was related to 9-11. And, and so that's that's my uh, two cents that I added in on the cover. But when you, but when you do that, you know, Bill and I looked at 75 to 100 different publishing companies before we narrowed it down to three and obviously went with Amplify. Um, and we had a running spreadsheet. So what you want to look at is, do they farm everything out? And what I mean by that, do they have in-house editors? Do they farm the editors out? Do they have in-house design studios to design the cover? Um, you know, how do they do the printing process? How do they, you know, if your contract says you have 2000 books, you know, how do they do the shipment of the books? Or do you have to take, you know, do you have to take all those 2000 books to your house and then ship them out yourself? Um, with Amplify, we just took X number of books. Whenever I need books, I just call them. They ship them to my house. But if somebody orders through their website, Amplify's website and or through my website, um, you know, that just comes out of the warehouse on the contract. Um, and, of course, you know, I wanted a hardback book. I didn't want a softback. Um, obviously, it's cheaper if you go with softback. But to me, I just wanted a more uh, professional book. And, and, Dave, you're holding it. It feels good in your hands when you're holding it. it. I mean, yeah. I did high-quality papers so the, the pages are soft. Yep. Um, you know, when people are flipping through it and reading it. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to add those touches because, you know, money's tight nowadays. And I want somebody when they bought my book and when they read it and I, I want them to get something out of it. But also I want them to know that they're getting a good quality product, uh, much like the Veterans Trash Talk T-shirts. You know, I get a lot of compliments Hell on the yeah, shit's good. quality of the T-shirts. You know, I just wanted the similar thing to go with the book. And so I paid for that. Uh, and that was expensive. Um, you know, but so you can save money by doing different things with the contract. But I would say that if you are, if you want to write that book and you want to do it, you know, Lauren, who was on the show the other day, yesterday on Thursday, two days ago, you know, she Great said, guess, you don't by have, the way. right. You know, she's, yeah, she, she was a lot of fun. Um, she said, you know, just write a sentence a day. You don't have to write a paragraph a day, you know, or, or do a recording a day or just do anything just to get you started on writing a book. Um, because it is can be intimidating uh, to go and write a book. And I and I didn't do one for a lot of years because of that. Um, but, you know, it's a great book. Um, you know, it's not just because of my story. There is other people's story from the Pentagon in the book. Um, but it also covers other aspects of my life, like when I met my wife and how that all went on and being doing military, both Army and Navy. Uh, but it also talks about, you know, how to be more resilient. You know, and I, I go in this story about more detail about the boat rescue where I saved you know the three out of the four fishermen dove in the water uh, off the coast of the chesapeake bay um you know and there's some other stories in there about you know one story i talk about is in the book is and there's a picture of me anybody who's done a sleep study knows this right when you go in for a sleep study they have all these wires all over your head right well being in aviation i dealt with a lot of you know uh, crashes right and so to lay in a dark room with all them fucking wires on my head they, they came they came and got me the next day and I, I know i didn't sleep and i looked at the doctor and i said you better got your data because i am not fucking doing that again uh, <laughs> because that freaked me out because every time i rolled over and those wires ran across my face it reminded me of a crash and you know I, of course i'm sure i woke up uh because of that but i would not put myself through that again and that story's in the book it goes into detail about the book about you know doing the sleep study you know, but that's something that, you know, people who suffer from PTSD or trauma, 
you know, anything, something like that can trigger you in an instant mm -hmm. uh, and bother you. You know, I know 9 11 is coming up in two days, and, and I posted on Facebook um, last night. I was up to about two o'clock in the morning because, and I don't know why, I just don't sleep well. I'm not depressed. I'm not suicidal. I'm not any of that. Uh, I was actually playing the PS5, playing Destiny. But, you know, that retired you know, life. Me, huh? just, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and, and my wife and youngest son just went to Italy on Tuesday. So I'm home alone. So I'm playing Destiny naked. Uh, but, uh, you know, we did not need to know that cliff, but <laughs> drink it, drink it, drink it, Chinese club wine, <laughs> drink it, Tenth mountain bourbon, naked yeah. playing destiny, yeah. destiny PS5. But, you know, you know, to me that the nights seem a little darker, uh, the day seem a little grayer and that's okay. You know, it's okay to feel that and have those emotions. Uh, it's just when those emotions overtake your life. And that's, that's what, um, you know, I wrote the book and that's why we do all that we do is, is we don't want somebody to think that their problem is so bad that somebody else wouldn't understand it. And I tell everybody all the time on Veterans Trash Talk, I guarantee you somebody with inside those social media platform inside of Veterans Trash Talk will understand what you're going through and, and, and what's going on. Uh, and everybody always tries to help each other. Uh, you know, we bend over backwards a lot of times. Uh, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time talking to strangers uh, on the, all the platforms that I'm on, because you just don't know. And, and there's fuck nuts out there who lie about their service and other stuff. But, uh, you know, for every one of that, you're helping 20. Right. That's why, yeah, uh, you know, we, we already discussed that. Uh, one of our one of our favorite people out of Veteran Trash Talk was a douchebag, right? And, uh, you know, we found out about it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, we still wish the best for him. Like, we still yeah, hope, sure. I hope, 100%. I hope, I hope, I hope I hope that he finds his way wherever he is and, you know, yep. and then he gets, gets yep. it going. Um, but old yeah, John that Wayne. That was, a, yeah, that was a shitty one. Old, old John Wayne Felt says, when I got out of the Army, they told me I wasn't allowed to write a book about my time in Iraq. Uh -oh. Well, that's because you're John Wayne, bro. All right. So <laughs> the, the, the things you were doing, so, probably not good. So I was going to so say, one thing about my book, Kandahar Giant, but that was Afghanistan. So, yeah. So uh, you, you can write a book about your experiences. And then if you're worried about it, um, you know, on my disclaimer page, I did, Bill did go to the Pentagon uh, to DOD and got approval for the book. Um, so that is actually in the page of the book. And that's pretty important. Um, so you can write a book about your stuff and then you can send it off to them. Then they'll, they'll give you that little, uh, you know, it's right here on this page. Uh, and they'll give you that. Oh, you can't see it, but, um, uh, and so it's important to get that disclaimer, but you don't absolutely have to get it. Um, so depending upon what your job is and what you did, if you, you were a, write, if you, you were a regular, we, we made infantry, sure that we. Yeah, like if you're a regular infantry guy, you can pretty much write about anything you did in Iraq. Almost. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless, unless he's talking kind of, about war crimes or something. Like, yeah, you yeah, might. You may. You may you not talk not. about it. I don't know, man. Yeah. If somebody yeah. covered, hey, <laughs> all, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to say we. I understand time, Bravo Company like never saw combat, but you know. But what, what, so when they lie about it, we'll figure it out. But uh, no, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fun going through OSET with uh, the name John Wayne. I fucking bet I'm it was, sure. man. I probably got a lot of shit. Hey, buddy, show your arm. Buddy, show your arm. Oh, you can't, huh? Oh, I can't. Got, got so, so do, I have John Wayne tattooed on my arm. He's got, right? he's got you. Hey, John Wayne felt. Oh. He actually tattooed you on his arm. Um, that right, John Wayne. No, that's that's that's. Uh, I, I'm trying to uh, to phrase this the right way, and Cliff, you can obviously correct me. Um, I, I have my days that I share with other people that were very bad days in my life. Uh, you know, Dave was a part of a few of mm -hmm. them. Um, and there's, there's just times where it's like, it's okay to be, go to a dark, gray place. Like, it's yeah. okay to go there, right? Mm -hmm. What's not okay and what kind of my buddy was talking about was getting out of it. Now, what I was asking you before for the book, for like I said, for those of you watching right now, there's, there's a lot of viewers that are, have been watching this and that are going to keep watching it later, is go get the book and read this because you're going to find some type of correlation to your life in this book. I guarantee it. I yep. guarantee it when you read the, the the courage that Cliff had to talk about what happened, uh, you're gonna see that like you don't you don't compare yourself to Cliff, but you're gonna see that he was dealing with something that you're dealing with just a different topic. Mm -hmm. Right? Like a, a, some yeah. some other type of tragedy, some other type of whatever whatever you want to call it. Uh but Cliff, what I was asking yeah. um is what about writing the book helped you as a person? What Hurt. what what was yeah, challenging I, 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 about it 
You know, the, the most challenging part, and, and I talked about this the other day, is um, is the stories that I told that my family didn't know. Right. And so I talk about things in the book that my family didn't know. And I talk about my suicidal temper, other issues and things that I have. And that caused a lot of um, guilt with my family, you know, because they they thought that maybe they could have helped more or, or done something different. Um, and just but, for them knowing you know, that you were going through that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And I was good about hiding it. You know, they're in Missouri. Yeah. I'm in Virginia. So there was a 1200 mile buffer there. It wasn't like they lived down the street. Um, but even when I went home, I was good about hiding it. Um, but also it's, it's therapeutic to, to, um, you know, it's, journaling is something I've never done. I was never good at, never believed in it. And I started doing it when I got the ear kick app and I believe in the ear kick app. It's probably one of the best mental health apps out there. That's free. But, you know, when we were going through these stories with Bill and he would write it and we'd, you know, I'd tell the story and he'd come over and we'd keep rehashing it, rehashing it, rehashing it. Um, you know, there were times that, you know, like, you know, Nick was saying, you go into that dark place uh, and you think about it and you think about, you know, what you saw and, 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 and the bodies and the conditions they were in and, and things like that. And I, and I go in a little bit more detail in the book about it and I, I really don't talk about it, but when that plane hit the Pentagon, it obliterated a lot of, a lot of people. And I, I crawled over a lot of, and I say stuff, but by stuff, I mean, you know, pieces of people, um, to go in and recover those phones. Um, but you know, we talked about this a little bit last year on the, on the program, you know, it was not the bottom floor where the plane hit, cause that was just massive destruction. But when you went up on the other levels and you saw people laying on the floor covering the head, but they had, um, you know, blood coming out of the ears or something like that, or the skin was waxy, or there were some people still sitting at the desk cause the oxygen got sucked out so fast. Um, you know, they had no idea what went on. Um, and so it's, it's those things and those images that probably bother me the most, uh, when I have to go and retell the story over and over again. And I, and I don't, I don't tell it in that detail I did today. Cause I just felt it was important. Um, because anybody out there who served in the military, he's a veteran who, who lost friends in combat or, um, you know, there's a lot of dates that come up that remind you of stuff and, and just know that it's okay to, to have those feelings or those thoughts. Just, just find somebody a way to deal with it in a positive manner and maybe not drinking as much or maybe talking to somebody or reaching out to that, that buddy or friend, but it's okay to have those thoughts. I mean, those, those pictures are vivid in my mind, just like it would be for anybody that, that had gone through that or, or the guy in the, the bay when I went to, to rescue him and I flipped him over after he quit moving in the water. And then we tried to get him in that boat and he was foaming at the mouth and it was going all over my face and, and, you know, all that stuff. And, and, you know, that's, that's hard to process, um, you know, if you're not used to that type of stuff. Um, and I would argue that nobody's used to that. I mean, firemen and police, police officers deal with that on a daily basis. Um, you know, and they have a lot of issues and, and problems. And I, and I speak to policemen and firemen about yeah, you know, shout PTSD out to the first responders. Yep, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, what they do is amazing. Um, so, you know, I just think it's important. And I think it's important to, to know that, and here's what a good friend of mine said, because I was feeling guilty after the rescue, right? And I talk about this in the book, is I was so focused on the one guy that didn't make it that I forgot about the other three that went home because I chose to dive in the water and save them. And he says, we are so easily wired to think about the negative and not the positive. And we, we fall in that trap so many times. And it doesn't have to be anything that's as dramatic as what I'm talking about or what I talk about in the book. But we focus on the negative way too much. And we need to start focusing on the positive more. You know, I did my mental health minutes and I talked about, uh, about your life being better now than what it was last year at that time. And I gave some examples for the last two mental health minutes. Glass half that. full, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, how how is that? going to impact. And I think it's very important for us as veterans to know that, um, you know, that's a, that's a tough road and that's a tough burden to carry. Um, and especially when, you know, you're talking to a buddy and you, you're just laughing and joking and maybe you guys are having a drink or something. And then all of a sudden he, he breaks down in an instant, uh, starts crying starts yelling and screaming or something. And, you know, how do you handle that? That's, that's a tough place to be. And, you know, you grab the guy, you hug him or, or you smack him and get him on the ground and then you get him refocused. And, and, you know, that's, that's just, it's just tough, you know? And, and I think, you know, I thought about this the other day when I was at Walking Falco 
you know, when you have PTSD and other issues, it affects everybody around you. It affects your family. It affects your kids. Uh, they don't understand why dad is screaming or mom is screaming for no reason. You know, they don't understand why, you know, some days dad's happy or mom's happy and some days he isn't. Um, and so, you know, for me with my two boys, in a way that they would understand it, I try to explain it to them. And it's not easy. It's hard. Um, and so, you know, if there's somebody out there listening and, and somebody said hi from West Virginia, hey, what's going on, West Virginia? Um, you know, just know it's all OK and it's all normal and we'll all get through it. And, you know, today's great. Tomorrow's even, even better, you know. Right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Thanks for sh- yeah. Cliff's spitting some, yeah, spitting some shit today. I, I gave pretty well, heavy. No, dude, I love it, man. <laughs> and it's yeah. true. It's like a solid message to everybody. I think talking about yeah, it is let, one of my I'll best therapies about as well. Real. Yeah. yeah I ahead, always, when, I, when, I, when I describe our podcast to people and especially veterans, and, I, and I'm telling them, like, hey, you're – you know, we're always, it's about, you know, we're always looking for money. We're looking for sponsors, but it's, it's difficult because of how authentic we are. All right. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard. So yeah. Hey, Michael Zamora is on too. What's up old 2P man. Um, yeah, Michael. Yeah. First platoon. Uh, they were okay. Yeah, they were all second right. platoon. All right. Yeah. Not even close. Buddy, <laughs> buddy built second platoon. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Back in the early nineties. <laughs> not wrong. Yeah. Don't, don't stop till your balls fall off. Not that he's yeah. <laughs> no it's but you know uh go ahead no no go ahead no go ahead no yeah, i'm gonna say something I, else I, no. I, i'm i'm gonna say like when I, how authentic we are you know dave shared his stories buddy shared his stories cliff shared yeah. his stories um it's there's just you gotta say it you gotta talk about it all right and yeah i i i my shrink, I call her my shrink. She hates when I call her my shrink on this show. We said that before. She's like, you call me. She's like, she's like, you call me your fucking shrink again on the show. And I'm like, well, that's what you are. You're my shrink. You know? And it's like, you know, and again, why are you why am I yelling at my kids? That's what I try to that's what I'm trying to work through, work out. You know, I've snapped on Buddy, I've snapped on Dave, right? Like it's just, you know, whenever you lose that control and you you thought you had control, and then you, now you're panicking because you've always been a cocky person. And if some, yeah. for some reason, you don't have control anymore and you're fucking losing it, right? Um, but, yeah, <laughs> where do people go to get this book besides the QR code right there? Is there any other platforms, anything like that else? That you can yeah, so you, you, can, you can go through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, anywhere you normally get your books. It's all available there. Nice. Um, if you do go out to the Amplify website um, and order the book through there, if you use the code WARRIOR, the promo code WARRIOR, they will take 20% off the book. Um, and it drops it down, I think, $23.99. Uh, but from now until 9-11, I'll have the book for $20 on my website. Um, you know, so if anybody wants to say now I do have to charge shipping, uh, so amplify it's, it probably works out to be about the same price, but, um, but I went ahead and, and reduced it down to an even $20 for any of the listeners today, if they want to go and order it. And I will personally autograph the book. Um, but you know, anybody, if I don't know you, um, cause I, I believe in doing personal message, I will go out and kind of stalk you on social media a little bit, uh, to kind of get uh, a little bit about you and learn a little bit about you before I sign the book, because I think it's important. I just don't want to sign it and just, you know, arbitrarily say something, um, you know, because I, I just feel that that's important. And I appreciate anybody who, you know, took the time to order the book and, and to get it. Uh, it will help you. You know, it's it's you know, it's it's a story that I think it's important to be told. Uh, my life isn't so extraordinary that it couldn't happen to anybody listening today on this this program or anywhere in life. I'm just Cliff Bauman. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy that drives a cool ass green Mustang and goes to car shows and and you know, last and joking, guy. my door is always open. Beautiful home. And you come Just stay at my house, and I'll give you a five star <laughs> Yelp rating. You know, <laughs> as 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 uh, Nick found out, you know, he's you know cooking. Hey, there was there was some like we were about to give time. We were about to give you some bad ratings, and then the power went out, and your power wall kept everything on. So that was uh, <laughs> yeah. like, shout out to Tesla, back, right? Yeah, yeah, back up to five that's stars. Right. No, that that's not. We'll, we'll go to a little bit of humor here. Let's transition. Um, is you know, like when the power went out in the whole neighborhood, Cliff turns every light on in his house opens, <laughs> and, then, and then opens his door and he goes and stands outside and looks like just so that everybody knows that Cliff Bauman still has power. Like, Don't do that yeah, during the apocalypse, though. You're going to be fucked during right. the apocalypse. Don't yeah. do that. That's right. Well, you know, you know, two years ago we put solar on the house and last year I put the Tesla Powerwall in. 
And so, you know, 100% off the grid. Well, my neighbors, you know, my friends that hang out, they were giving me shit about it. So I was just waiting. It took a year, though, brother. But the power's gone out three times, and I've had my and you're oh, good to I go. every single yeah. fucking light on in my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to let him know. Such a great, <laughs> such a great flex. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll move on to the AAR here. Uh, pretty simple one. All right, there is a very holy mountain. What the third, the third, fourth, fourth holiest mountain? Fourth, All right. for the fourth. yeah, for Native Americans, yeah. yeah. Right, and there's a scope called Lucifer on there. Uh, Built by, by the, the Vatican Catholic Church, yeah. right by the Vatican. Um, what is the holiest mountain for the Native Americans? I don't know. Uh, I for don't the know. Native Americans, that's a good question. Know. I'll have to Google it. But yeah, this is number four according to that video. I think you said number four. Yeah. Is yeah. it in North America or? Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Well, because I mean, you got you probably got some of the the Aztec and Mayan stuff down there. Those I'm sure. You know, like probably yeah. probably yeah. up there. But uh, Machu you know, Picchu. Machu yeah. Picchu. Machu Picchu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think, think I think it's in Chile. Chile, I think, is the like the holiest. Oh, Chile. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Buddy, you heard how we said that, right? Yeah, they were, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just because yeah, he tried languages. Yeah, yeah, tried was, that a, was, was that a, was that a flex again? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Chile, yeah. Chile, 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 yeah. oh. Chile. Chile. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, Buddy's uh, honesty <laughs> gap, which he didn't want to say, actually filled right into what Cliff's book's about. And a lot of what Cliff's book's about, and there's a lot more into it, is you don't just throw – you are your brother's keeper. You don't just throw him to the side. Mm -hmm. All right? And I, I've i done this before, okay? I, I'm, I'm sure that if the guys wanted to say something, they would they'd probably be honest. Too. There's times where, you know, I went home and I was like, I probably should have talked to him. Like, yeah. I probably should have, you know, uh, you know, like, like there's those times. But that's okay. All right? You're not Jesus. Like – you're going to make those mistakes, but you yeah. are your brother's keeper. If you call him your brother, and I don't care about you, transgender or LGBT pronoun people, your sister, right? Whatever. It's a human being, right? Like if you are responsible for them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when they go down a destructive path, like Buddy's talking about, and they go like, you know, commit a felony, you're gonna to have to go pay the price, brother. Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! First of all, hold yeah. on. Now, I'm not saying that situation. Yeah. There are. Buddy, some, buddy had a felony. I'm, I just gotta, <laughs> I just gotta clarify. There are some felonies that I'm good with. There are some felonies that I'm not so good with. You rob a bank. Yeah. We could talk. <laughs> you kill <laughs> We could talk. You touch a kid. You go to jail. You go mm -hmm. I, I no, we, ain't talk, we, we ain't talking. We ain't yeah. talking. Yeah, we ain't talking anymore. Can. Then yeah, yeah. yeah. we're yeah. beyond talking. We one thousand percent with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the Vatican, then, right? That's the yeah. Like I said, <laughs> there are some felonies that I'm good with. Well, it's a good yeah. thing they stole all that gold from the Mexicans years ago. So to pay off the the lawsuits for the kids they've been raping. Oh man, <laughs> we're gonna get so, canceled yeah. for that. That comment. Yeah, we're huh? done. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Facebook. Hey, fuck my yeah, man. My man. I went on my beams. We're breaking that reentering atmosphere over. Yeah. Um. But and then and then we got my doorbell got, just rang. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and then of course we have we have Cliff on here again. Trust me, if you don't follow his page, VTT's Mental Health Warrior. Yes. I know uh, I know. Chris put that on the thread. Uh, Buddy is still yet to create a VTT page, so don't follow him at all. Um, he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how. He's only been a yeah. – like, he honestly would have the most following out of all of us. If we actually Clueless. Did. He would. <laughs> he would. <laughs> he would. <laughs> now he just talks to himself on TikTok. He doesn't have a pretty yeah. entertaining TikTok, but yeah. he doesn't do that anymore hey, either. So before follow we jump off, TikTok. I got public service in all of no, no, you're, you'll get the last word. You'll get the last word. Um, okay. And then, uh, well, actually, <laughs> technically, Dave will get the last word, but you get the last official word. Dave gets the, Dave gets okay. the, the yeah. Um, but yeah, Dave's VTT Space Man, so go follow him. He's got like 5,900 followers. 6,000, 6, I think. Yeah. All right. Get him, get him there. I'm only at 3,300, <laughs> but, but it is what it is. You know, I just, I'm not as, you know, not as I'm followed by me. Yeah. Um, I follow myself. So, so go follow all the pages uh, and excited, excited to, unless Cliff was going to say this, talk about uh, Len, uh, the BTT specific Tita coming back on the podcast. Hell yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And she's going to be joining Cliff. And here's something she said on Twitter. She goes, I'm coming back, you know, and I was like, well, you were never gone. All right. Yeah. You know, you took a break. You were never gone. 
Uh, and Len knows that I don't agree with probably about fucking 60% of the shit she says, but more power to you, sister. Get after it. Say whatever the fuck you hey, want. Hey, but she she's right. she never took yeah. a break from VTT <laughs> official, you know? Ever. And that's Ever. like yeah. shout out Ever. to all of our mods in VTT official. Like you we, guys are yeah. Yeah. We love you. And yep. Len, that just because Dave doesn't agree with you, or I don't agree with you, or somebody else doesn't agree, it doesn't matter. You just keep going out there and being genuine, being authentic, and uh, you know, do whatever you got. Well, and that's how she is. She's never gonna change who she be is. You. So. Damn right. hundred percent, hundred percent. So all right. You. Over to Cliff for the last words before Dave closes this out. Hey, uh, real quick. Um, you know, the I changed my green screen behind me. It's usually the mental health warrior. I have uh, my suicide attempt uh, was from 9-11. And the reason I put that up there for two reasons. One, that was a project I worked on with the Ad Council and the Brady Foundation for um, gun safety. Now, I'm a big gun safety guy, and I'm going to go on their podcast here in a couple of weeks, and the Brady podcast. I say all this to say this. They shove gun locks and everything down everybody's throat. I got that. I'm also a suicide survivor. I couldn't find my brother's gun in his house when I first looked when I was going to take my life. I know there's a lot of people listening that have guns in their house, and they are, they are proud gun owners, and they know how to operate their weapons. And they know everything. What I'm going to say is, if you are not in a good place or you feel like that you need something, I want you to put a gun lock on that one gun that you would use if you're going to do something to yourself. I know you got 15 guns in your house, 20 guns in your house. I lost all mine in a boat accident, so I have no guns in my house. Um, but put that gun lock on that one gun, and you guys all know what I'm talking about. We all have our favorite weapon. That's We all have that one thing that we're going to go to. Please just put your gun lock on that one weapon because if anything, that'll give you a moment of clarity before you do something stupid. And I understand that. And that's coming from somebody who has been in that moment, who has been in that frame of mind. And, and thank God I didn't find his gun because he didn't have a gun lock on it. Um, but, you know, they always preach gun locks, gun locks, gun locks. What I'm saying is when I did that project is, you know, if you're not going to put a gun lock on all your guns, stick it on the one that you're going to grab when you're in that in that moment. And uh, with that, um, I just want to say thanks to everybody for, for listening. I want to thank you for having me on the show and everything that you guys have done for me in the last three years. And please go out, uh, get the book, Mental Health Warrior. You're going to love the book. It covers a lot of stories, has a lot of self-help tips in there, too. Um, and, you know, just everybody be out there, be safe. You know, it's the weekend. It's Suicide Prevention Month. But prevention, suicide prevention happens 365 uh, all the time. Uh, and we are our brothers and sisters keepers. So with that, uh, Dave, I'll turn it over to you. Damn, Cliff. Hey, I appreciate you. Great episode you, again. Yeah, we love you, man. And, and again, like I can't emphasize this enough. I used to do like short videos, but Cliff is on it every day with his mental health minute. And you definitely, I know Nick mentioned this earlier. You definitely need to need to watch it because, you know, some of that stuff might apply to exactly what you're going through right now. So go over to Cliff, go over to VTT's Mental Health Warrior, give it a like and uh, watch some of his videos because uh, Cliff, they've helped me out personally as well. So I, I do appreciate you for that. I'm super pumped that you're part of the team. Something great here. And for everybody that tuned in late, you can go watch us on YouTube again or listen Most to us. Most YouTube on comments in history of veteran trash talk. <laughs> that is what's up. So book a record. Again, everybody, I didn't look at the following that we had on YouTube. If we could do this every episode with our 10 to 20 viewers, we should be, you know, get those subscribers up. Um, mm -hmm. Because, again, we are, we are stuck in whatever we are, shadow band or whatever. But... We need to get the message yeah. out because we're continuously promoting veteran-owned businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, giving back to the community. Um, so, yeah, check us uh, out. Talk about aliens. We yeah. continuously talk about aliens if you really we, want to know about aliens. No aliens today, buddy. Or did I bring it? That's not true. That's not true at all. You, uh, that's a lie. There were definitely aliens. It's a lie. There. It's a lie. Buddy was gonna <laughs> let. Buddy was going to let it slide. And then I was going to take you back for it. And then you literally went into an alien story. So that's actually. It was like, uh yeah. Like I was going to have your back. Like You could have just let it go. Like, so here's the thing. So for anybody that's watching, go to Face Man. Send me a message on Face Man about a conspiracy I can cover. Give me enough time because I got to actually read you know, read about it for at least 10 minutes. That's not alien related, okay? Because um, these guys, everybody on the panel is not allowed to know what I'm talking about until we do a show. So, yeah. Send me some uh, conspiracy ideas. Or, so or a hot political those. argument. Fuck it. 
Bring it up. We yeah. can do that yeah, too. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't. Or 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 ghost videos. Do you love ghost videos? Remember Those the ones from my brother's house? We had or that on, walked uh, up out of his porch. That was yeah. a good one. That was a good we one. About yeah. the ghost video. But anyway, yeah. go to veterantrashout.com. It has the links to everything. Go to shop.veterantrashout.com. It's got our awesome merch. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts, yep. Red Friday shirt. It's Saturday, but uh, we're wearing Cliff's wearing the Mental Health Warrior shirt. Um, go support the cause, support the movement, and subscribe on YouTube and smash that like button. Love y'all. Happy Saturday. Catch you guys next week. Bones. Deuces.